Welcome to the Prodigal and the Priest podcast, a podcast about faith, sports, and two friends from different cultures. Here are your hosts, Joey Scansella and Father Paul Bechter. Hello, hello. I was, I was bringing down my mic instead of the, the computer. I have no idea how any of it works, so... <laughs> You looked cool to me. There you go. I wasn't. So as you noticed, everybody, this is not Father Paul once again. It seems like we're just constantly taking off. So Father Paul is on vacation. He's not on a silent retreat, not doing anything holy, but he is playing, I believe he told me about 36 holes of golf every day for the next week. So must be nice. Must be nice. While... No one else would do the podcast with me. (laughs) I pretty much said to my wife, I said, listen. Your wife, Nikki. My wife, Nikki. I I said, I always mention you. That's true. Do you want to be famous? Do I want to be on a (laughs) world-renowned podcast? And here you are. Here I am at our dining room table. Our dining room table because we have three children to care for. So hopefully this podcast is not interrupted (laughs) by... A crying baby who's two newborn, weeks old, yeah. newborn, Sophia Rose. Just out of camera over here. Yep. Um, Dominic, eight years old, or about to be eight years yeah. old, and Francesca, four. So hopefully none of those kids bother us during this podcast. All the parents who are listening, they they feel us. They feel us. They understand, you know, at nine o'clock starting, you know, projects <laughs> because your children take up your day yeah absolutely so wife husband what do you uh so besides obviously being married to me you're involved with the church that way um i don't know give our listeners a little bit of background what do you do at the church as well um i work part-time at our parish as uh the sunday school coordinator so i take care of our littlest kids our preschool kids um in a normal year which this is obviously not normal uh we do a problem. Uh, we do Sunday school on Sundays during the eight, ten, and noon masses for our three, four, and five year olds, and uh, we teach them to pray and talk about Jesus and um, hang out with them while parents go to mass. Usually, which is really handy for me, so that I don't have to talk to our kids at home <laughs> and can just allow you to do that because yeah. you're already used to doing it. At yeah, church. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But it's interesting, I I wanted to bring up a topic that Marcy and Father Paul spoke about, and probably not that great. Oh, yes. In the sense of, you know, being somebody who works for the church, Mm -hmm. and obviously, you're like a double threat. You are married to somebody who works for the church, and you also work for the church. Yeah. So a lot of our Sundays for most of our life. Most of our married life, yes. Most of our married life from the time you were seven through, no, I'm just (laughs) kidding. So most of our married life, we're going on, what, 10 years? This coming year will be our 10th wedding anniversary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. 2021, yeah. 2021. You would go up to the church around 6.45, 7 a.m.? yes. You would get home around twelve thirty one. Yep. And I would give me a quick two minute update about how everyone's days have been, and I'd say see you later. See you later, and I would go. Um, sometimes I'd see you guys at four thirty mass, unless we went to the five p.m. mass, and I would see you at nine thirty usually when yep. I was bringing home dinner for myself, and then uh, kids were already in bed. That yep. was our Sabbath. That was our restful day. And a lot of people, I think, can reflect back and say, well, that's a pretty terrible Sabbath. And (laughs) why would you want anybody to work for the church? But one thing I've always appreciated about you is the difference in the way we grew up. Kind of in the idea of youth ministry. So I grew up in New Jersey Youth ministry there was not really what it is here. It was not, 
you know, catechetical, theological. It wasn't, you know, Christocentric focused. Uh, we never did adoration. We never did any of these things. Um, you know, for those who have been to a Steubenville conference or watched any different things and have heard any Hickman speak, he was your youth minister growing up. So you had yeah, a my claim to fame. Your claim to fame. You you had a vibrant youth ministry. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think that shaped you more than it did me of kind of seeing his family. Yeah. And that call to the church and also the ability to, you know, uh, yeah, live, live that life and live that calling. I don't know. So you got anything to speak towards that? (laughs) Yeah, I think, um, well, I did have good examples, uh, when I was in high school of youth ministers who's, yeah, that it was part of like their family's mission, their family's life, you know, culture that they, their wives were involved and, um, their kids came along to things and, um, that they was just, yeah, that was part of like their family. It wasn't like, it was like this whole separate thing. Like, Oh, this is my job and that's all it is. You know, I go nine to five and I come home. Um, but it was like, yeah, it was their, their part of their family's like culture and life. Like we used to have Bible studies at their house and we would, um, Kana, his wife was also really involved. She was actually my eighth grade religion teacher also. Mm. And so, um, so yeah, we just were like, they just were involved in the ministry and they were part of it. It wasn't just like they were, um, like that it was just the youth minister and that's all he was. But like, you got to see like the other facets of the kind of their personalities and what, yeah, their family was like, and kind of brought that into it. Which I think the point that I've always heard you say, and I love thinking about is the blessing of working for the church and especially within youth ministry is that your family can be part of the job. Oh, yeah. Compared to like take, I remember my dad, right? He was a, He's a civil engineer. He builds bridges. He does a lot of cool things. Take your son to work day. Take your daughter to work day. Yeah, we used to go out to the bridges. We used to go in the dump trucks and the excavators and all these things. But that was one day and then it's like, okay, you can't have a kid there. Right. Our family would not survive if it was not like integrated in the mission of for the sure. church. Yeah, for sure. I think it helps. Well, A, I have the same degree as you. Um, so shout I Shout out Franciscan sh- University. Out Franciscan Theology and Catechetics. Yeah, down with UD. <laughs> Kick those people off the show. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I think, uh, maybe lose my train of thought there. So I think that it was. it's important to me because it was, it's something that's like being, involved in the church and like a minister in the church is also important to me. It's not just like, well, that's Joey's thing. Like he's just, Mm -hmm. you know, involved. That's what his job is or whatever that he's just involved there. But, um, that it's something else. I'm like, Oh, well I, I, I grew up with a really, you know, great one, a great, uh, youth ministry program and, and church community. And then be that I went to school for the same thing because I wanted to be involved also and minister in the church also. Mm. So I think that helps that those two things kind of help, um, help our family life be part of, I guess, ministry. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think it also like the glory stories of it are when people see that your family is, you're still approachable even during family times. Right. So what I mean by that is I think back to this story. I was, um, my first job, I got hired on youth minister in Ennis. Right. Culture shock for me already coming to Texas. Moved to a little small town, Ennis, Texas. Amazing group of kids really embraced us um, because at the time you were serving as a missionary. um, At the Pines, yeah. The Pines Catholic Camp for a year long missionary, not just the summer year long. And then, so I would see you every like two weeks or so I would drive out there. Um, they got to, you know, know you when you would visit. I think by us, then we got married, we started our marriage by us still, you were like part of the core team served in different roles within the parish. I remember one teen in particular, I know you can, remember this story, but there was a young lady whose parents got divorced. Um, 
I doubt she listens to this show, so I'll uh, I, I won't <laughs> I won't say her name or all the details. But um, there's a young lady who it was like out of out of nowhere, yeah. like never thought anything bad was going on, and pretty much her dad was like, "Yeah, I've only you know stuck around because you know I I didn't want." to get a divorce from your mom while you were in high school. Right. So like a week or two after her high school graduation, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, I'm getting divorced. Bye. I remember she was wrecked. Yeah. And she turned to us. And I don't say she turned to me because she didn't. She turned to us as, as a couple, as a family that said, we're going to minister as a family. And I know a lot of you are saying, okay, good for you. You're a great youth minister. I know I am. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but see that? That was a pity laugh, everybody. That, <laughs> that, is, was... that is what I get all the time at, at, at the house is the pity laughs for my wife. But I think it applies to everyone because I want to encourage. We were debating what to talk about, like yeah. marriage, families, working for the church, different things. And I think it all boils down to one fact that I see a lot of times when people get married and they have kids and they're starting to live that life, they kind of fall back from ministry. Yeah. Or in their head like, oh, I can't actively do this. can't do both of these things. Yeah, I can't do both. And I say, no, like I think our teens, our world, our young, uh, you know, young adults, our, our people looking for mentors, whoever it is, they need that even more. They need that stability of holy for sure. families, of holy couples, of holy people that are living their life for the Lord. For sure. I think that's like very true. I think that's one of the reasons it. I've always made efforts for us, me and the kids, to be seen and be kind of involved, um, you know, going up to your retreats or stopping by the beginning of a 242 night is that... Dad show. Dad show, as the kids call it, yeah. Can we go to dad show? In the assemb- Whenever we go to the assembly room, they call it. Oh, is dad show going on? No, yeah. not today, guys. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, that it's just important, especially like you kind of just said, in our culture right now where so many families are, are broken and so many kids are coming from those families and – or not even they're not even broken, but their parents aren't really involved in their faith and they're not seeing that. Right. So that they have the opportunity to be like, oh, look, like Joey's wife is here and she cares. And oh, look, his kids up there doing the sign of the cross or jumping around the stage and singing the songs. You know, it's just like. Or saying dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. <laughs> and them all answering. <laughs> they found out Dom could do that from uh, obviously a commercial from watching sports. <laughs> and then all the kids are like, look what the youth minister's son can do. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. Um, so I think that's just good for them for like the teens to see that and then i think it's just good in general for like our faith community like for people to see families yeah being involved in ministering in the church and not just like you said like oh when i was single that was easy or when i my kids are older i'll be able to do it you know but like there's still a stage of life where it's important for for people to see people in that stage of life ministering and being involved in the church. And that's not a guilt trip to anybody who has kids or is overwhelmed with life or any of that. It's more of a, um, an encouragement. It's an encouragement to us. It's an encouragement to everybody in that situation to say, yeah, it's really tough. Um, I'm not minimizing that, but you got to step a little bit outside of that comfort level and say, even if it's inviting somebody who's not in that situation over to see family life, um, you know, kind of inserting yourself or allowing other people to just be around that nuclear family. And so, um, for yeah. sure. And, and not just like, Oh, come over for dinner and that's it. You know, like we have a thing at our family, family dinner, we go through kind of like, what was the best part of your day? What's your favorite thing you did that day? And, um, Dom's Dom's top three, Jim recess. Every day. Every and day. what, what is his like third thing? Uh, Math. Like, He's like, I played it at recess. I went to whatever special it was, usually gym. And I, I had math. <laughs> yeah, and I had math. And I'm I like, ate lunch or something. Yeah, it's always like, his top okay, three great. Things the I'm things like, we knew you were doing today. Great. Yeah, cool. Cool. Uh, um, but I think it's important for people not just to like, to be like you said, like insert it into that family life. 
and not just like, oh, here's, you know, like, oh, come over for dinner and sit down and, you know, that's whatever. But like, that they see like, oh, this is our family culture. This is our family life. You know, we pray before meals. We talk about our day during meals. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we pray at night. We kind of, whatever, just that they're part of that. Like you always joke with the seminarians when they're here on their, uh, in the summer assignment or like pastoral pastoral year year or whatever that like, we love to have them come over and be part of our family to be like, hey, (laughs) a vocation confirmer or, or denier, I guess. I don't know to be like, is this what you want? Do you want to be a priest or do you want to wrangle three kids at a dinner table and talk about their favorite things of the day and hear about Legos and yeah. And yelling from the bathroom or showering time and fighting over a TV show and all of that, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly and all of that. But Yeah, I really think it is another challenge to us as Catholics, as Christians, to step outside of our comfort zone, whatever stage of life we're in, to invite people continuously into that stage and to be a witness of Christ, no matter what that stage is. And it's not just saying it's only for people who are married or family life. If you are living a holy single life, invite other people into that holy single life. Sure. If you are a teenager living a holy life, invite other people to know what it's like to be Jesus Christ. I mean, I always am reminded by, you know, it's probably personal and I didn't ask you if I could share this, but I'll share it. I, I remember, you know, before our wedding, you, you showing me that card you got on a Steubenville conference saying, you know, like I'm going to live my life and live for purity, you know, until I'm married. And like, you know, I often wonder would I have been more like that if I had that example of a friend who lived like that, you know, all the way back in eighth, ninth grade, you know? So I think it's an encouragement to say, what are you doing to live your life? How are you living it as a Christian? Now I will say, because I think some people have brought up and argued and said, well, what if you're so busy ministering to everyone around that that's where you get the whole, oh, they're the preacher's kid, right? right. You don't, you're not ministering to your own kids. And what's the, ba- cause I know people argue that back and say, well, what's the balance? It's tough. It's tough. It's, you know, uh, with our kids, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like trying to get them to pray every night and they're like, I don't want to pray. I don't want to do this, you know? And then there's like sweet moments like Dom wrote that note the other day that was like, God loves you and there's nothing you can do to ever take that away. But that's, I think with any kid, right? Like you got, you got moments where they're loving it. And then there's moments where they're little. uh, Right. So is that a fear as a, you know, preacher's kid, youth minister's kid? Um, probably a little bit. Yeah. Our kids, I think. Only with Dom or with the <laughs> yeah, other with, ones? I don't know about the other right now. Uh, Dom <laughs> maybe for sure. But that's just, I think that's just his personality. He's kind of a contrarian personality. So mm, yes, that that might be part of it. But yeah, I think it's, it, I mean, it's tough no matter what you like family life is like, right? Like if you were a normal, I want to say normal person. Uh, normal, if I was only normal. If you were like only a in CPA. a normal job as a CPA, yes. I don't think it would be... <laughs> any easier, you know, like, I think it's just, it's tough having kids and talking about our faith and sharing that and getting them to understand why it's important and do all that no matter what. And so I think, and really my point there is to, I think some people are like, well, if I'm so focused on others, how am I going to focus on my own? I get that. Yes. Your family is the priority. Um, your spirituality is the priority. You need to have a balance, but also I think we can let that fear cripple us sometimes into not taking action and actually getting out of the boat and going and following the Lord. Yeah, no, I don't think you should let it cripple you for sure. I think it's self-sacrifice is always good and putting others before you and other things before you is a, a great way to grow in virtue. Great way. So would you, anybody who is considering working for the church or is thinking about what what would it be like for Jesus to really be the center of my life and, you know, to take on that, any words of wisdom? Well, I think on the church side, I think, I think I've always said it, we've always said it to people uh, that like, like this isn't just like a job for you. It's a vocation and it's like, 
I think I've said it a couple times now. Like it's it's a mission of our family. Like this is we're bought into it too. Like we're part of it. Um, and so I think it's really hard uh, because youth ministry is a burnout job. Working for the church in general can be a burnout job. Mm-hmm. That um, people whose spouses maybe aren't necessarily bought in completely, it can be really tough on them. Um, and we've we know people who've had that and have that experience. Yeah. And um, so I think it's important that like you as a as a couple have like discerned that and been like, okay, yeah, we're bought into this and this is something we're going to do and we're going to be, I don't know, fully, fully in it for sure. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really helpful. And then I think, um, what was your other question? I don't know. Something about Jesus being the center. Um, something about like Jesus, that but that was, that was a great answer. So yeah, we're yeah, just going to yeah, leave yeah. it there. So but I think I, that applies to anybody like in anywhere in life. I think your faith, like, like that, that mission needs to be at the center of your family's life. And if it's not at the center of your family life, then you're not going to have success. You're going to have, yeah, like you, if you're just praying at meals, which is great to pray before meals, then mm-hmm. yeah, your kids aren't going to learn that this is important. Right. Like that going on Sundays is something you have to do and then praying at meals is something we have to do. That like if you if it's not something that's the center of y'all's family's life, it's it's not going to thrive and continue to grow. Absolutely. So although our next episode is the questions episode, uh-huh. we're not going to do that tonight because I know you want to watch the Astros game. Yeah. And we probably need to check on our children and, you know, all of that. But she seems to be sleeping. So. There, you, <laughs> there you go. Um, I only have one question, though, that I'm oh, sure okay. all the listeners. All. All the listeners are uh-huh. thinking is, how much do you regret not naming her Stella? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Really? Here's the thing. I think you could maybe had said on the podcast. I like the name Stella. I, you actually like it a lot. I do. I don't like it with our last name. Just and the problem was I gave you the, a little bit of a window and you <laughs> kicked it open and just could not kicked it open. Could not close it back down to so say So really you're saying this is your fault. This is my fault that I said I do like Stella. And then you ran with it. You could not. What if people pronounced our name different? Scanchella. Scanchella. Stella Scanchella. S- Stella Scanchella. That's totally different sound. Okay, great. You start telling everyone that <laughs> you pronounce your like, last name. Um, Joey. Scanchella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to change yeah. your intro to your podcast. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah. I got to get this guy to re- re- record. You got to do a the... few things to figure that out. But, you know, I mean, it's not too late. Um, we could always change it. We could I think apply now we have to, to pay a fee if we want to change it. Yeah, I'm a poor youth the minister. Birth, okay, we won't, we won't do that. Um, okay, so we do our closing segment. I don't Ooh, know how much okay. you listen to the podcast um, or are forced <laughs> to listen to the podcast, but uh, we do a segment Recommended called... Recommended to be listened to. That's right. Uh, we do a segment called What Are You Watching? Thinking, Reading. I always like this with guest people uh-huh. because people know what I'm going to say. Sports, yeah. Father Paul, some, I'm reading this book in Hebrew, right, right, you right, know, right, 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 book right. on sin, that's all black, right. and, you know, whatever. So, I'll let you go first. What have you been watching? What have you been reading? And well, I've been watching the same things you've been watching. We've been watching a lot of sports because the Astros are in the mm. championship series right now. And, and you're uh, from Houston. I'm from Houston. I grew up in Houston, so I am an Astros fan. I will say I didn't ever watch as much sports until I met Joey and married Joey. I didn't know that there was so many sports. <laughs> or that people watch Sports Center more than once. Yeah, or that you could watch so many sports. Um, we grew up like watching a little bit of sports. I remember my mom watching basketball. My parents, both of them, I guess, watching basketball, mm. like when the Rockets were good. Shout out to Jerry Shout if she's Jerry, listening. Yep. Uh, when the Rockets were good. And then I played soccer. And then we didn't really watch a lot. I mean, I don't, I remember what the Astros, we watched the Astros kind of growing up and then they got bad and now they're good again. Anyway, so we've been watching that. I've also slowly been, I think you mentioned it. I've been rewatching the office while watching the, listening to the office ladies podcast. So mm. I'm slowly making my way through the seasons. Um, what am I reading? I started this book called he leadeth me which father paul talked about on the podcast 
And then uh, Jen Fulweiler talked about on her podcast, and I thought if both of them... She has a great podcast, too. Yeah. What's it called? This is, is Jen. This is Jen. Yeah, highly recommend it. She's a Catholic woman who just speaks her mind and keeps it real, Yeah, and I like it. And uh, But anyway, so she recommended this book, too, saying it was one of her favorites, and then Father Paul said it, that he leadeth me. It's the story of the Jesuit Russian priest who gets captured and spends... Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And it's really good because he relates it, like, kind of, even though they're, like they're crazy circumstances, like I will never hopefully be in solitary confinement in a prison. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, he like relates like those feelings like to normal life, like the feelings of loneliness and that and like feeling loneliness from God. And that's not necessarily common. It not, it's not just something you ha- that happens to you when you're in solitary confinement in a prison, but in, you know, normal life. So it's really good. I still have like 50 pages left. I've been reading it for the last few months, <laughs> ever so slowly. I should put it on my nightstand and start Although reading you're in the pretty, middle of the night. Yeah, you're a pretty quick reader. What you thinking? What am I thinking? I'm thinking the Astros are on right now. They're still winning. They're still winning 1-0. Um, we record this on Tuesday night, by the way. Yeah, this so. is Tuesday night. So I'm, I'm just thinking that they need to win tonight to really <laughs> keep themselves in it. There you go. Mm-hmm. So watching similar sports. Um, although I've been watching a lot of video tutorial, tutorial <laughs> <laughs> tutorials on um, just how to do better video because of all the videos I'm doing oh, with yeah. church and children's ministry and youth ministry and all that. And then um, reading, I started this book with this small group of kids. Oh, yeah. Um, how was it? It's One great. chapter in? Yeah, it's three chapters oh, excuse in. Me. Thank you. Sorry. But humility um, and on the... Is Venice- it called humility rules? <laughs> yeah, humility rules. And um, when you got it in the mail, I was like, is someone trying to send you a message? <laughs> yeah, you need a little bit more humility. So um, I'm reading this. It's a great book. Um, this group of um, young homeschool men, they were like, hey, we want a leader to go through us with this book. And I was like, yeah, I'm really excited. And so... Um, it goes through the rule of St. Benedict. And nice. so it's it's been really good. And what am I thinking is, you know, there's always some type of project in our house. Uh-huh. And you got I'm a thinking, new one? Well, I'm just like trying to figure out how to get grass to grow. It is growing. Yeah, but not as like lush as other it's people's. Fall. You know. It's getting, well, I mean, today it was hot, but. Yeah, it's still it's getting cooler. I mean, it's just, it's grass envy. <laughs> of other people's. <laughs> oh, all the time. I pass lawns and I'm just like, I'm literally like, why does the Lord? They probably pay a lot of money us? to have it done that way. <laughs> About your lawn. Why, Lord, have you forsaken our lawn? <laughs> I mean, there's uh, other pe- It's like, Oops. I, I just don't know unless I tear it all up and put down sod. You've already done that. Yeah, I know. It is not working. <laughs> It so, is working. It just listen. Okay, just now that now time. they're getting the bantering and all of that. So, uh, love, thank you for joining me on the podcast love. and always um, entering welcome. into um, my um, new adventures and life of ministry. And I want to encourage anybody. You know, you have questions about this. Have questions about how to incorporate it into family life and just you know your faith in that. We are email always Joey. around. <laughs> no the email. Nikki Scansella at Gmail. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so talk to us. I mean, we love sure. talking about our Joey life. Joey loves talking. I, I do. don't know if you know, if you guys have noticed. I do. So I'm going to go talk to my baby. Okay. Who, she's getting a little fussy, huh? Yeah. Sophia. So thank you to all who uh, are listening and we encourage you to uh, subscribe to YouTube or check us out. Submit a question online at prodigal and the priest at gmail.com or st ann parish slash ptp i want to say take care and god bless that's right